Hey everybody, my name is Jessica Tatro and welcome back to the Display Gardens at Pleasant View. It's a nice, cool, crisp fall morning here in Loudoun, New Hampshire. I've got my sleeves on. We just had a really cool breeze come through. And it's the middle of September, if I forgot to say that. So we're towards the end of our gardening season here. I wanted to give you an update on one of our gardens that is part of our Smallscapes program that we turned into a larger application this year. The three plants that we have in this garden are Coleus, Color Blaze Wicked Witch. This was new to the industry this year. So this is the first time you've been able to see it at garden centers this spring. Just look at that nice dark foliage. Almost reminds me a little bit of chocolate. It's got a nice ruffled edge. You can probably see better there with a nice green haloing around it. This is a fantastic plant for sun as well as some shadier locations. Our coleus varieties, this one especially, and over half of the ones in our program, were bred by the University of Florida. So they trial these out in full sun on silver plastic reflective beds, and they only let the best of the best go into market. So they let the conditions dictate what plants will thrive and survive, and they also select for very late or no flowering at all. And I, as you look around this bed, you don't see any flowers on the coleus. The reason that this makes it so good for the home gardeners, as well as landscapers, is that the plants aren't putting any energy into flower production. They're putting all that energy into maintaining the leaves on the bottom of the plant. So you have nice full coverage from the ground all the way up to the top, as well as putting the energy into the branching. If you can believe it, look at this hedge. This is one single plant wide. When we first planted the garden this springtime, I was like, uh-oh, I don't think I have enough plants in this bed. In this bed, it's close to 200, so I know most people don't plant that many plants out in their garden, but this was a showcase garden for us. And you can see here, we're focusing on our sign. So this is what everybody sees when they drive up to our property. And I planted them, I'm like, uh-oh, I don't think I have enough plants here. And then we, summer kept going. We got some water on it. We put our slow release fertilizer down and then they just took off. About a month ago, I actually had to come through here and I hedged them off. I took about six to eight inches off the top of the here and they've continued to fill in and perform very, very well. So if you can believe it, we planted these at Memorial Day and here we are past Labor Day. They've grown the entire summer. So this is a great way to add some color into your garden. Fairly foolproof, don't have to do a lot of maintenance to them at all. In the middle here is Sun Patience Compact Orange. The story behind the Sun Patience is that they are bred to thrive in the sun, but also perform very well in shadier locations. Due to the breeding in the background of these, they are not going to get any of the downy mildew that you get in the gardens on your typical bedding impatience. So these are going to continue to grow all season long and not be affected by that pathogen. So I love the bright color that orange adds to the garden here. And then in the front, uh, you've seen this in a couple of the other gardens, is sedum lemon coral. But it's a great plant because it's really easy to grow, grows in a wide range of garden conditions and it just adds a nice pop of color. And I can't quite reach down there, we'll try. But if you can see the coloration of getting the dark against the green and just pulling out that edging. So this is an update on one of our small scapes gardens from last year that we had in a small plot. And here it is in a landscape application with a large plot.